Hello, St. Peter's and friends. We hope you are staying safe and healthy, and we're glad to be worshiping with you today. And now we'd like to share a few announcements. Living into our vision to be a Matthew 25 church, St. Peter's has committed to provide hearty and healthy meals by partnering with the Garden Church in San Pedro on the second Sunday of every month. We need your help with providing and preparing food and boxing and delivering meals. Our next opportunity is on Sunday, November 14th at 3 p.m. in the St. Peter's Church Kitchen. Sign up on our website at stpeterspress.org and come be a part of this community effort. In addition, as our St. Peter's campus is beginning to see more life and activity, we are seeing more traffic from persons experiencing homelessness. As we are able, and depending on the need, we try to have bags of food and water available to share. As the weather begins to shift, we anticipate that other needs will arise. To prepare for this, we are asking the congregation to donate gently used shoes, light jackets, windbreakers, non-bulky blankets, etc. to have on hand for distribution as needed. Please contact Tracy King Ortega to see how you can help at tracysking at gmail.com. Set aside your Thursday evenings and come to our Matthew 25 focused Zoom class that meets on Thursdays from 7 to 8, 15 p.m. This series focuses on the Gospel of Matthew and our Hebrew scriptures offering concrete ways of responding to Jesus' vision of God's kingdom in the here and now. As we learn together, we'll hear from fellow Christians in person and via video and discover specific opportunities to take action ourselves. Contact David Johnson at david at johnsonerp.com to register and receive your Zoom invitation or use the QR code inside our bulletins and on our website. We have two preschool fundraisers. First is our Holiday Evergreen fundraiser. We are offering in-person and online sales, phone and email orders. For those that are interested in online orders, please visit our Preschool Evergreen site on our website, stpeterspress.org. If you prefer, you may contact our preschool director, Alexis White, to place your order. She can be reached at 310 377-1194 or alexis at spbts.org. Our second fundraiser is with Boone Supply. It's easy. No order forms, no checks to collect, no handing out items. Just send, share, and shop. 40% of purchases go directly to our preschool. Go to our website and click on the preschool tab at the top of the homepage and you'll be directed to both fundraisers. Thank you for supporting our preschool. We are excited for Trunk or Treat today from 3 to 4.30 p.m. All children are invited to Trunk or Treat from car to car for candy in our church parking lot. There will be live music and games, so invite your friends and neighbors and come on by. We will have scarecrow decorating and pumpkin carving too. All are welcome. The Great Gathering Congregational Meeting and Sanctuary Renovation Kickoff is next Sunday, November 7th. We will have in-person worship at 10 a.m. in our newly renovated sanctuary with the Great Gathering, which is our congregational meeting. This will follow worship. After the meeting, we'll gather for fellowship and food, including an In-N-Out Burger food truck. Free burgers, chips, and drinks for all. It's a perfect Sunday to invite friends. A live feed from inside the sanctuary of our in-person worship will begin on November 7th, too. So we'll all be worshiping live from wherever we join in. Help us in spreading this invitation to all. And now, from wherever you are, let's come together and worship with one another.
Welcome to worship at St. Peter's by the Sea. It is so good to be here with you, worshiping together, um, even from our own spaces. We are a body, a family, worshiping together. Um, and today in particular, we are recognizing and remembering All Saints Sunday, where we take time and we remember those um, that are no longer with us here on earth, knowing they are still with us, um, a part of our community here and part of our faith lives, even now that they are not here. So as we enter worship today, we turn our hearts to God. We pray that our eyes and our ears would be open to what God is saying, knowing that we are surrounded by the cloud of saints as we worship. Let us worship God together. Welcome to worship. Let's join in together and sing of our God's goodness and our God's good grace. Come on. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like we 
we are turning now to our time of confession, where we recognize that God is God and we are not. Um, knowing that God loves us so much and all we have to do is acknowledge um, in our own hearts what we have, um, areas in which we have fallen short. We do that together and we do that individually. Will you please join me in our prayer of confession? Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Hear now our silent prayers of confession. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy on me. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Friends, with the saints of all the ages, we proclaim again the good news of the gospel is this. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning, St. Peter's family. It is such a uh, gift to be able to be here with you today. Uh, to be able to provide this invitation for the offering. Um, you know, many, uh, many years ago, around 25, uh, I was able to come to St. Peter's as a result of an invitation. And in doing so, uh, what I found was my first church family. And what I'm able to say to you now is that I do know that this is my only church family. Um, I come from a very small family. Uh, I have two older brothers, and both of my parents were only children. So the idea of venturing out into um, finding a church family uh, at the age of about 40 was uh, something very new and unique. And yet you welcomed me in such a way that I immediately knew when I stepped onto this campus that this was my home. The staff has touched me in a way that, um, as you can tell, brings just such joy and gratitude to my heart. The friends that I have been able to obtain here truly have changed my life. I am so grateful for the gifts that I have been able to receive here at St. Peter's. It has sustained me in ways that I am able to adjust to the uncertainties of life, of which there have been many, and I know that that is true for you as well. So today in this invitation for the offering, I invite you to give generously through all the ways that we know that St. Peter's is able to touch the lives of so many. Our mission is an outreach that has been an ongoing um, foundation for our church. Our staff is an ongoing foundation for our lives. 
We know of the ways that we can give here at St. Peter's by contributing on Venmo, sending a check to the office, and by being able to give of our gifts, our spiritual gifts, some of which I did not even know I had until I came here to St. Peter's by the Sea. The nurturing that we provide, the care through caring ministries is something that touches our lives in ways that um, we are able to go out into a variety of spaces. Through Stephen Ministry, we're able to meet one-on-one -on -one with individuals who are having a difficult time. Our deacons are able to provide outreach to each and every one of you. There are so many abundant ways. I'm listening right now to children in the background at our preschool who are giving thanks to God. And so, as you know that all of these gifts are available to us at St. Peter's, I ask of you to give freely. Thank you and amen. On this Sunday, 
As we remember the saints who have gone before us, we are greeted by two stories in the ninth chapter of Acts, a story of healing and a story of a new life. As we hear these stories, we may find ourselves thinking that they are simply unbelievable. Healing and raising someone from the dead seems to be the responsibility of Jesus. But now in the book of Acts, Jesus is gone and hearing the story of a fisherman turned disciple who has the power to heal and to even overcome death by the power of the resurrected Christ. This may be too much for our 21st century assumptions. Is it a hard story to believe? Perhaps. But it may be just the unbelievability of the story that takes us into the territory of faith. Listen now to God's word from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek means Dorcas. She was devoted to the good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows stood beside him, excuse me, all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with him. them. Peter put all them aside and outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now, will you please pray with me? May the Spirit of the living God fall afresh on us and on Paul for our understanding of this scripture. We have been blessed by your Lord, Heavenly Father, and we yearn to know more and understand more. Please open our hearts and our minds as you talk through Pastor Paul today and we learn to carry your words with us in the week ahead and out into your world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, good morning. It is always a gift to um, gather in this way around the Word of God in this space together. It's been a few weeks since I've been in this seat. Thank you to those who have um, taken it upon them and sensed the call to bring the Word of God to us over these um, past few weeks uh, of a Matthew 25 series that we've been journeying together. That series ended last week, but I think that this sermon um, will have a bridge to it as well if you uh, lean in and listen carefully. Um, thanks to Val Ryan for that scripture reading. Thank you for the many times you've read scripture for these online worship services um, over these past um, weeks and months. Um, what a gift you continue to be to our church family. You know, today marks the last um, service that will be pre-recorded. We've been doing this for 86 Sundays, or uh, 19 and a half months, or 595 days. Um, 
that's a lot of resource and energy to pour into these services. Um, you see me, you see some of us um, sitting in front of these cameras, but what you don't see is everything that goes on behind and around and outside of this room. And so I want to say thank you to um, McCain Treat. Um, I want to say thank you to Kathy Moen, to Christine Pearson, to Mason Dunbar, to Cheryl Grau, to Anna Sedeth. Um, each of those persons um, has pretty much had their fingers and their hands on um, these weekly worship services for quite a while. I want to say thank you to other staff who have made valuable um, contributions to these services along the way. You are appreciated. And certainly I want to say thank you to leaders, elders, and deacons, and other church members who have um, brought their gifts to bear in this space for the living of these days. Um, we are excited to move to a live stream feed next Sunday. And what that means is that whether you are worshiping here on campus indoors in our renovated sanctuary or you are worshiping from home or wherever, we will all be worshiping together and in the same space at the same time. So technology will bring that gift to bear in um, another um, step in a, an exciting direction. So uh, thank you to the many saints among us who have been um, part of St. Peter's uh, rising up for the living of these days. Today we are also remembering the saints who have gone before us. Saints who have departed this life to more life with God over this past year. And if I'm honest, loss stings, and perhaps all the more so during a global pandemic. I was recently reading the story of a young professor who suffered the sudden death of her also young, 33 years old husband, weeks before the shutdowns of the pandemic began. She wrote um, this very uh, beautifully crafted testimony describing her heartbreak, how her beloved husband cried at the birth of their children, how he danced in the driveway to make their children laugh before they would drive off to school each morning. She said that one of her most treasured places in the entire world was beside him uh, under the wrap of his arm, and she shared how her own grief was magnified every time one of her children clung to her, rubbing their faces into her stomach and crying, I miss daddy. She wrote, the absence of my husband echoes in every room of our house. And she continued to describe the details of her own grief with a very tangible and poignant sorrow. She also recalled um, in those final days of his life, um, entering into that space with him, and a nurse reminded her that um, his hearing is the last uh, sense to go. So though he appeared um, not with her, that his hearing was actually likely still intact. And so she remembers sitting by that bedside and, and, and holding her husband's hand and saying to him, I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. Reading her words has awakened my own loss, my own feelings of grief, losing my mother two and a half years ago, losing one of my best friends two years ago, losing a great-grandmother one and a half years ago at the very beginning of the pandemic. All loss in my life that I know is echoed and resonates in yours as well. The last day I saw my mother alive was May the 29th, 2019. I remember, like it was yesterday, walking into that 
hospice room. You know, hospice, um, this amazing space with amazing people that you wish never had to exist. So I remember walking into that hospice room. There were just three of us, my mother, um, who hadn't been conscious in over 36 hours, myself, and a nurse who gently reminded me that my mother could still hear me. So I was preparing to um, return back to Los Angeles from Seattle where my mother lived because I needed to get back here for some end of the school year events for my children. And this was going to be the final moment before that departure with my mother and quite likely the last. And I remember hovering over her in a way that was probably invasive to any outsider um, who was observing. But I wanted to breathe um, the same as air as my mother one last time. And I remember saying to her, I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. Perhaps tomorrow, November the 1st, which is the actual All Saints Day, is an All Saints Day like none other, with our church's tradition of remembering the saints with churches around the world, saints who have died during this last year, sadly compounded and magnified by so many other tragic deaths nationally and internationally. And perhaps we can exhale a collective grief on behalf of all who have died, saying together, I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. The scripture that Val just read for us a few minutes ago tells about a group of people, a lot of people grieving when Peter entered the house where Tabitha had died. Her death was, was devastating for her community. The writer of Acts, named Luke, also the gospel writer, the, the, Luke goes into great detail to make sure that we know how important, ta how important Tabitha was. And he begins the story with these words. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. This is the only time in the entire New Testament when a woman is named a disciple. Though many women go, often go unnamed in the Gospels, we are also told that this woman is known by two names. First, Tabitha. Tabitha is her name in the Aramaic, and then Dorcas. Dorcas is her name in, the, in Greek, and her name means gazelle. And I love this because uh, Tabitha was, was swift in service to the most vulnerable people among her, and amongst her people, the widows. Tabitha was generous, she was kind, she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. So loved by her friends and community and neighbors that at her death, all of the women showed up wearing their tunics and other clothing that she had made for them. Tabitha's care and compassion was literally woven into the fabric of her community and their life together. Now, this city called Joppa, it is cosmopolitan. It has people um, from all places coming together and living together. And so in this cosmopolitan port of Joppa, this disciple named Tabitha Dorcas, she 
sort of in her work and in her service, she bridged the gap between race and religion. She bridged the gap between culture and language with a generosity of spirit and resource. Sewing clothes for anyone who had need. So it is no wonder that they summon Peter when Tabitha dies, desperate for the risen power of Christ to enter that house and to those grieving hearts. Perhaps what they need to hear, perhaps what they want to hear, are those precious words of, of, of grieving at the bedside. I hear you. I love you. We love you. We are here. There's a guy named Willie Jennings. He is a, a scholar academic out of Duke University's Duke Divinity School. And he wrote a, a, a book on the book of Acts, which is called a commentary. And he writes this, he says, whether this vignette, whether this, you know, snap, whether the snapshot from scripture is evidence of Luke, Luke's the writer, remember, of Luke's positive view of women or not, he has certainly given us a plateau from which to view a new future in which men and women in Christ have a different way of seeing themselves. And that different way of seeing themselves is as disciples. As with every death, he goes on to write, there is glory and grief at the end. The glory is a life lived well, lived in service to others. And here, and he's talking about this Tabitha story here, glory shares strong grief because to lose someone who cares for the weak and the vulnerable, whose life is turned toward making a difference in the world is a bitter, is a tragic loss. So Peter steps into this scene in Joppa to offer this unmistakable truth, this gospel truth. This woman matters. And the work she does and has done for the poor and the vulnerable matters to God. It matters so much to God that God will not allow death to be the last word. When Peter says, Tabitha, get up, he is reminding all of them that you have not been abandoned in your loss and your grief. Peter is repeating the words of Jesus, and we are assured that Tabitha lives again in resurrection power. One of the, the things that I, I, I kind of hold um, fast to, one of the things I appreciate, even love about our All Saints traditions, and that I love about this story about Tabitha is that she is not raised to new life because of some heroic or extraordinary or exceedingly miraculous presence among her or her village. No. She simply sewed clothes for the poor. So, too, we Christians, we Presbyterians, celebrate on this All Saints Sunday, um, and we recognize that the life of faith, the life of, of, of following Jesus, of following God, is so often made up of, of, of these small, these humble, these daily acts of kindness and charity. We do not need to um, live out or embody or enact a big miracle to become a saint in the eyes of God. We are simply called to be what? Faithful. We are simply called to be faithful in small and daily acts of humble service. As Mother Teresa once said, this may be familiar to some of you, may be brand new to others, but it's one of her great quotes. We cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great love. 
I was very recently notified that another beloved saint of our church family recently went home to be with the Lord. And that beloved saint's name was Evan Hazelton. Evan was as kind and thoughtful and faithful and steady as they come. Truly a, a, a man who sought to use the, the heart and the mind that God had given him and graced him with for the betterment of the world and the people around him. Someone wrote these words to me about Evan. They said, Evan was a wonderful man filled with the Holy Spirit. So this was certainly a homecoming for him. You bet. It was absolutely a homecoming for Evan. And I know, I know that his beloved wife, Dorothy, sat vigil with him over these last three years and lived life with him, but sat vigil with him in these last days and hours. And I know that Dorothy was saying to him, I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. Our Christian calling is this, this, this invitation, this calling to daily, practical, even public measures of faithfully living in the way of Jesus. In a few moments, we will spend a few minutes Recalling the names of the beloveds of this faith community, our congregation, who have died over this past year. And as with our friend Evan, and the friends of Tabitha, we will remember their lives as a testimony to the call of Jesus Christ. We will remember their lives and that we are called to live our lives in countless acts of, of kindness and hospitality and humility and love and charity. We will testify to the power of God to raise the, 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 the living from the dead and to instill in us that the power of sainthood for the living of our days is an embodiment of these words. I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. May it be so, and may we be so. Amen and amen. Friends, we are called to live every day, being an island of already in an ocean of not yet. And isn't that the promise that we claim today as we take a few moments to remember All Saints Sunday with our community and with faith communities around the world? Please join me in our Litany of the Saints printed in your bulletins and on your screen. We remember the great ancestors of our faith, from Abraham and Sarah to Paul and Phoebe. For these ancestors of faith, Lord, we give you thanks. We remember the prophets and priests the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. For these teachers of the faith, Lord, we give thanks. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. For this family of our faith, Lord, we give you thanks. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives and parents whose lives ended too soon. For those close in our heart, Lord, we give thanks. 
We, we remember with love and gratitude these who have gone before us into God's presence this past year. Harry Tom Brundage. Reverend Dr. Clayton Cobb. Reverend Dr. Bill Creevy. Mary Gobbitz. Evan Hazelton. Paul Jenkinson. Steve Kuykendall. Richard Dick Lohr. McNair Maxwell. Lucille Poole. Gloria Streeter. Emily Wiley. Layla York. For anyone else on our hearts this morning, we pause to offer those names to you as well. We stand in the presence of God, proclaiming with people from all times and place, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses. Grant that we, encouraged by the good example of your servants who have gone before us, grant that we may persevere in the running of this race that is set before us, until at last, with all your saints, we may attain your eternal joy through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We pray now the words Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for online worship. It is always a gift to be in this virtual space together. For this last uh, pre-recorded online worship service, we brought back the, the fire for you because we're getting into the season, which tells us it's time to move into the sanctuary. And so what a great Sunday next Sunday will be as we move um, our in-person patio services indoors, as we begin live streaming, wherever you are, however you come, we hope that you will be um, together with us uh, for uh, the celebrations of next Sunday and the seasons to come. You know, um, All Saints Sunday, is one of those um, spaces that gives us time to, to breathe, to um, remember the people in our lives who have gone before us. And, and loss um, takes many forms. Grief takes many forms. And as I began the sermon with today, um, loss and grief stings. And so, uh, you know, in some of my own experiences of loss, I uh, um, have found great comfort in um, a quote by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I've shared this before, but I'll um, share it again. And it simply says this, nothing, nothing can make up for the absence of someone whom we love. It is nonsense to say that God fills the gap. God doesn't fill it. But on the contrary, God keeps it empty and so helps us to keep alive our form, former communion with each other, even at the cost of pain. The dearer and richer our memories, the more difficult the separation, but gratitude changes the pangs of memory into a tranquil joy. The beauties of the past are born not as a thorn in the flesh, but as a precious gift in themselves. So as we remember and give thanks for the saints in our lives, uh, in our life together, um, remember that you are not alone, that God is with you, that God has not abandoned you, that God has not abandoned us. And remember that God calls us to continue to live in the spirit of their legacy so that they can continue to live and breathe in this world through the presence of their beloved. So wherever God takes you this day, this week, I am confident that there is someone who needs to encounter you and encounter the presence of God and hear the words that perhaps you can uniquely offer to them. That I hear you. I love you. We love you. We're here. Friends, as we go from this place, may, may the deep love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and friendship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. Friends, go in peace to love and serve our God. And the people of God would say, that's right. Amen. Go in peace.
my trunk full of stuff But they got something that I never had And that's enough the wine, I am his, he is mine, I'm not alone, I now have a home, broke the bread, let him in, heal my soul, wash my sin away, it's a brand new day, and all I need is you. All I need is you